Well, it is hump day, and like they say, stoop kid never leaves a stoop. Here we go. What's going on, YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 video, and I'm just checking in on you. What's going on? How's it going? Now, today is July the 3rd, and this is going to be your Cassie Mendoza and Danny Weaver weekly vendor reset and must buys. So sit back, relax, grab that popcorn, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know what you think in the comments section below. And finally, shout out where you're from. It's always cool to see where everyone's from. But all right, now before we get to Cassie and Danny Weaver, we do have to find the snitch. And like I say every single week, please let everyone know where you find the snitch. That way everyone can get to Cassie and Danny Weaver before they close. Because remember, these two vendors will open and close every other day. So you have to catch them before you have to wait a full you know, day, day and a half before you can uh, get to them. So for instance, here is my location for the snitch. I am at coordinates 1408 by 3626. And I am just south of the 1040 safe house. Now accept the bounty, and what I do is I go to the bounty, I click go to details, and then I click abort bounty. That way I can keep it for later. And as long as your open world is set to heroic, you'll get all heroic bounties, and then you can complete those later. But now that we have their locations, we need to find the white shopping cart icons that are in the map. So the first one right here is Cassie. She is in a Federal Triangle right outside of the theater. And here's Danny Weaver. Danny Weaver is in the Southwest, just outside of the Air and Space Museum. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Cassie first. We'll see whatever Cassie has to offer. And then we'll jump over to Danny Weaver and we'll spend all of our textiles and uh, see what kind of goodies we can get from Danny Weaver. But all right, so first we have Cassie Mendoza. So what I need to do is jump off the rope. Ah, there we go. And it is a little bit quicker to go this way. Just a little bit, not much, because you have to wait for this, uh, this lovely door. But you can get there. Come on, start running. Come on, come on. There we go. All right, so Cassie Mendoza. Half of her inventory is just a restock from all of the other vendors from yesterday, but she does have a few exclusive goodies. Ooh, we have some scavenging people right here. Hey, what up? Yo, what up, bitch? All right, sorry. Excuse the language. Anyways, here we go. Timestamp it. Do whatever you need to. Here is Cassie Mendoza's weekly vendor reset of must buys. Now, starting off at the top, we have the named items, and this is where I'm going to give you your first disclaimer. Now, you have to unlock these bottom two named items, the first one being the Shield Splinterer. So if you do not see this from Cassie Mendoza, you do have to unlock it. Now, to unlock this weapon, you have to hunt down and eliminate all of the Year 1 Hunters and open up the Ivory Chest that is in the base of Ops. Once you do that, you will actually receive this weapon, and after that, Cassie will sell it every week. Now, the same logic applies with the hunter-killer chess piece, except for this one is linked to Warlords of New York. So you have to hunt down and eliminate all of the year two hunters, and then you have to open up the off-white chest that is in the Haven settlement in New York City. Once you do that, you will receive this chess piece, and then Cassie will sell it every week thereafter so now you know how to unlock these items in case you don't see them and let's start off at the top starting with the darkness this is the named marksman rifle with perfect eyeless and this one with really high marksman rifle damage decent headshot and rate of fire what i would do is just recalibrate that rate of fire off for damage to targets at a cover and you're good to go that's not a bad weapon. What I would do is probably put this with uh, the Habsburg guard chest piece with perfect trauma and then go for those headshots because perfect trauma will apply the blind 
and then you can get all of this amplified damage to go with that. Moving on, we have the Picaro's Holster. This is the best in slot holster for any damage or tank build, and especially if you're using the Ninja Bike and Technician, this is best in slot for sure. Now, the reason being is it comes with a armor core and a weapon damage core for a normal attribute. And not only that, but if you use two pieces of Brazos, you will also get a skill tier. So what I would do with this one is just uh, pick this one up. You could either recalibrate the repair skills for whatever attribute you want, and then just optimize that armor to max and you're good to go. Uh, two decent items. They're not bad. But again, these are uh, also located in the uh, countdown vendor, I believe. Moving on from that, we have the Shield Splinterer. This is my favorite weapon to use right now. I have one right here, fully maxed out and expertise 26. Now, what I would do with this one, as you could tell, is uh, recalibrate that magazine size off for damage to targets out of cover, and you're good to go. Remember that the Shield Splinterer comes with Perfect Optimist, and it is a lot of fun. And also with Project Resolve, you also have to remember that they upped the RPM of this weapon, and they also upped the magazine size of this weapon. It is truly top tier, and I use it for a majority of my builds if I'm not going to use, you know, some sort of exotic AR. And then finally, we have the Hunter Killer chest piece for the named items. This is the named Golem Gear chest with Perfect Intimidate. And this week it comes with skill damage and armor regeneration. What I would do, because this is a good one, uh, because remember the Golem Gear 2 piece bonus gives you armor regen of 1.5%. So you could pick this one up and easily just recalibrate that skill damage off for any attribute you want. I would probably go with like say crit chance, go crit chance armor regen, or you could go hazard armor regen, depending on what kind of build you want to go for. And then just simply optimize that armor and armor region. They're both high enough to where it would only be a couple to max it out. Now let's move on to the gear set items. First up, we have the Hot Shot Backpack. This one with decent weapon damage, but then weapon handling. You want crit chance or headshot on there, in my opinion. Moving on, we have Ongoing Directive Chest with Crit Hit Damage. This is a good one. I'm going to pick one up. Just recalibrate the weapon damage off for an armor core. You could have like a tanky Ongoing Directive. Oh, and here's some knee pads to go along with it. Same thing. Just uh, recalibrate the weapon damage to an armor core and keep the crit. Yeah, keep the crit on both of those. That would be pretty badass, mine. Uh, Heartbreaker Gloves with Crit Chance. Again, another good gear set item. I mean, that's three in a row, all with crit, all decently rolled. They're okay. Uh, after that, we have Future Initiative Holster with Explosive Resistance, and then Hardwired Mask with Status Effects. Going to the high-end items, we have a MP5 with crit hit damage and close and personal, a surplus SVD with max marksman rifle damage, health damage, and spike. A Providence Chest with Weapon Handling, Headshot, and Vanguard. And then finally, a Grupo Mask with Headshot and Status Effects. Looking at the mods, we have Headshot 8.1, and then Shield Holstered Region 4.5. And uh, let's see here. Must buys, things to look for from Cassie Mendoza. I would probably, I mean, if you like the Darkness, put this with the Habsburg Guard with Perfect Trauma. That would be a good combination. The Picaros is always a good one to pick up if you do not have it. And the Shield Splinter with the max assault rifle damage. This is going to be a must-buy, in my opinion. All you have to do is recalibrate the magazine size off for damage targets out of cover, and you have two out of the three fully maxed out. That's really good. And then the Hunter Killer. Just uh, change the skill damage for whatever attribute you want, and this is also a good named item to pick up. As far as the gear set items, the two ongoing directive with crit and the heartbreaker with crit, all were good items to pick up, and well, that's it. So let's see, just really fast counting these out. Three, well, actually, all of the named items weren't bad, so that's four, and then two ongoing and heartbreakers. So there are seven good items deal. to look at from Cassie Mendoza. But all right, now let's finish it up with Danny Hawiva. 
and to do so we need to fast travel over to the air and space museum now if you haven't yet hit the thumbs up we do daily division content so make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell and uh yeah I, i'm jumping into first descendant a little bit it's all right it's a little bit of fun let me know your thoughts i mean it's not division i mean uh I'm a division guy through and through forever. Um, but it, it was a, a little refreshing to have something new to play. You know what I mean? And that just further uh, explains how bad we need that DLC for the Division 2. All right, here we go. Danny Weaver, timestamp it. Do whatever you need to. Here we go. Now, this week, Danny Weaver has, let's see, 5, 8, 11 caches. We have 11 caches from Danny Weaver. That is one exotic, four field proficiency. So that's eight items there with any bonus on top of that. And then three named items. So that is what? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So at least 12 items plus our three crafting caches. Very nice. Let's go ahead and pick these up and make sure it takes your textiles. That way you know it's going to go to your inventory. And if it doesn't, just simply log out and log back in, and you'll be good to go. But it is taking my textiles. And then let's see what we get. Now remember, like we do every week, just let me know in the comments what you get. And I will show you what I get. Here we go. I show you yours, you show me mine. All right, here we go. Exotic. Ooh, the pesty. All right, we got the pestilence. You know, the kids are going crazy in the background. They, what are they? They're, they're over there like snorting sugar or something. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to go see what's up here in a second. Got the pyromaniac, the pestilence, cherished. There it is, the perfect trauma that I was just talking about to use with the darkness. This named item, what's this one? The Punch Drunk, another good one for headshots. You could also use that with the Darkness and that Habsburg Guard for more headshot. That'd be pretty badass, mate. And then looking at the field proficiencies, let's see if we get anything special. Hmm. Let's see. Come on. Ooh, the Relic, okay. And, well, some other ish pieces. All right. Kid, kids are going crazy. I think they're fighting or something. Let me go uh, take care of them. The pestilence was really high, though. Let me know what you got in the comment section below. Yo, that pyromaniac's really good, too. All of these have damage to targets out of cover. You see this? All of those did. Relic, the sniper, the MP5, the pyro, and... Oh, well, I mean, yeah, the pesty also comes with it, but it always does. All right. I'm going to get out of here. Go hang out with the fam. Hit that like, subscribe. You know the whole spiel. And I'll see you in the next one. I'm Kamikaze Von Doom. Peace out. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm coming, I'm coming.